Can get some levels off you. Uh, these are some levels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can you sing the song of Thor and his magic hammer? He is Thor. This is his magic hammer. Mew Mew. Also called Mjolnir. I think um, that, that'll work. Okay. <laughs> Please do not use that. That's the opening. No! <laughs> Gathered together from the cosmic reaches of the universe. Here, in this great hall of the Signal Watch, are the most powerful forces of good ever assembled. Join us as we discuss all manner of topics across the multiverse of comic books, history, creators, storylines, movies, and more. The Signal Watch Podcast presents Kryptonian Thought Beast. A comics podcast series dedicated to truth, justice, and peace for all mankind. You're listening to Avengers Chronological Countdown with Jamie and Ryan. to the signal watch as always i'm your host ryan steens and with me today is jamie steens and today we are talking uh, we we have to give this whole thing a preface um this podcast i have no idea how it's gonna go this is the least prepared that i have ever been for a podcast by the way yeah so (laughs) i would say six months ago oh this was last year Okay. This end of last year we recorded it. Yeah, so in 2020, <laughs> we we haven't done a, th- uh, a Marvel podcast in a while. Because we've been doing the TV shows. Right. But we haven't been doing the chronological stuff, necessarily. Yeah, no MCU stuff. Well, I mean, it's all MCU, but... I meant the... the you don't want to sound like a dum-dum, Jamie. Cinematic universe, Ryan. It's all cinematic universe. Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh, we, we recorded a Thor Ragnarok podcast, and then it, it didn't record. Um, yeah. It recorded for like two minutes, and we talked for like 90. I was really depressed when that happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't remember anything I said. I'm sure it was brilliant. Oh my god, Jamie. The thoughts you had. I know. Each a pearl of wisdom. Uh-huh. Um, the best I've ever been. But... <laughs> We had, we didn't rewatch the movie. No. Last night we wa- we watched Mystery Men and and Unholy Rollers. So nothing to do with okay. Thor Ragnarok. Ryan watched Unholy Rollers. I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not watching this. Um. So it's been a while, but we've seen it a few times. You've seen it a few times. I have seen this movie a lot, and it's been on cable, so we've caught bits and pieces here yeah. and there. But unfortunately, I've thought a lot more about Black Panther, which is the next movie coming up, Uh than I have about Thor Ragnarok in the past couple days. (laughs) But we'll try it. Sure, why not? Uh, We're going to remember it as well as you're going to. Would you you like to recap it? Sure, yeah. Uh, Michael Bell has said that we should be recapping movies, so we're going to do this. Um, So, if it's been a while, uh, when last we saw Thor... um, he he kind of fled after I think uh, Avengers two, um, and uh, we find him and he has been on a quest to find something. I, you remembered that more than I did. Yeah, so he's <laughs> hanging out with guy, 
the, 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 de- the devil guy. Yeah, the who, horns. Yeah, it's like 11 in the morning. I have no memory of that <laughs> right now. Um, who's Suter. Surter. Wow, okay. Yeah. And uh, Ooh, Voiced by Clancy Brown. Voiced by the Clancy Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... He brings his little head back to Ragnarok, back to Ragnarok, back to, um... Asgard. Asgard. (laughs) It's going so well. It's it's gonna really impress people. Um, and in Asgard he finds out that Loki has been posing as... Odin. Odin. I'm getting the movies right, right? Hey, this is, your, your level of remembering the characters' names is about where mine usually is, so I'm happy. Um, oh, yeah, and their his dad's missing. So they go to Earth, and they meet Stephen Strange. He and Loki. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And, um... Right, I even forgotten that Doctor Strange is in this movie. Yeah, he is. And, um, many funny jokes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Odin dies, which is less funny. Um, and it's very touching. And that's kind of one of the things we should talk about this movie, is it manages in a very Ted Lasso-esque way to kind of merge comedy and sincerity. Yeah. And the, the, the sincerity is not overshadowed by the comedy. It's not like you have, you know, a serious scene going on and then it's like joke, joke. Like you'd like to say joke shaped things. Yeah. Um, it's, it's sincerely funny and, and, and the, the funniness it's is brought, it's sincerely funny. It's sincerely funny. Uh, and the, and the comedy is brought about by like the characters act, like it's character based. Right. So it doesn't feel out of place. Yeah. Um, and upon Odin's death, that means he can no longer keep the un heretofore known about sister Hela. Can't keep her in hell anymore. And so she returns to Earth in a super foxy. Um, she returns to Asgard. She returns to Earth. She comes. To oh, that's right. She, she. Okay. Um, and the funny thing is, they must have shot that all against green screen because in the promo photos, all of the photos of Kate Blanchett and her costume mm-hmm. from that scene, she's in an alleyway. Are you serious? Uh huh. <laughs> so they were trying to throw people off as okay. to how the movie was going to go. Right. Um, so she blows up Mew Mew and then, uh, goes to Asgard. Oh, and, and, in the fight, Thor and, and, and Loki try to escape over the rainbow beam. Um, and she manages to knock them out and they end up in, uh, I can't remember the name of that place. Me either. Begins with an S. Sakar. Sakar. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, so, Jeff Goldblum land. Yeah. Uh, I almost said War World, which is in Superman comics. It has nothing to do with this <laughs> at all. Um, so, yeah. They end up in, in Sakaar, uh, where Loki has, because time is timey-wimey and over the Rainbow Bridge, and on Sakaar, he has been there for months. Thor shows up yeah. and is... On, on Planet Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> right. And shows up um, kidnapped by Tessa Thompson. As, uh-huh. So I had a long conversation on how to pronounce Valkyrie. Um, Is it? It's not Valkyrie. Well, Paul seems to think it's Valkyrie. Apparently, the British don't pronounce it Valkyrie. They say like Val Valkyrie. Well, in the movie, they say Valkyrie, so that's what I'm going to say. Yeah, it's what we should say. Okay. Um, and. Thor is then entered into uh, gladiatorial games and is pleased to discover that he is fighting uh, the Hulk, who has been missing since Avengers 2, uh, Age of Ultron. Yeah, and is now the champion of this the gladiator games. Yeah. Um, and chaos ensues. Yeah. It's probably the... That's, you know... Good enough. That's way more plot than you guys want it. But that's you know and that's kind of how the movie is. Like when you turn it on, you kind of forget there's a lot of plot in this. Like a lot of plot. There's a lot of plot. Yeah. Um, and it still manages to yeah. do the. We only covered about and, like two thirds of it. Oh, if that. If that. Yeah. So, uh, all leading up to it ends essentially at the beginning of Infinity War. Right. Um, like Black Panther must be happening somewhat 
<clears throat> either before or simultaneous with the events of this film. Yeah. So I feel like there's no accident that there's so much time between when Dark World came out and when this one came out. Because I feel like they decided they needed to go in a completely different direction. I don't know if that's true or not, or if it's just what happened. But it was a good choice. Right. So Dark World, I think, was the last artifact of, in the Marvel movies, of... I don't know exactly how to put this, but... In the 80s... (laughs) If you said you're going to make a superhero movie, until Batman came out in 1989, people were like, oh, you mean Biff, Bang, Pow, Wham. Mm -hmm. And they assumed you meant camp. Um, You can even go to, they they tried to do a Wonder Woman pilot before the Linda Carter show in the 70s, and it was the same people who'd done the Batman show. And we were, you can find it on YouTube. There's like a, a trial, like 10 minute thing they did. And it is painful. It's all shot on video, like Archie Bunker. And um, the reaction to it and kind of the lesson learned from 1989's Batman, which was not carried through for the other Joel Schumacher movies, was we need to be like a little more serious with this. We need to be dark and do gritty reboots and whatnot. Um, And... I think that you end up with, you know, <laughs> you end up with the long tail of that as we're getting a gritty reboot of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Um, this is true. So, but anyway, but point being, um, I think that Marvel thought they needed to be, in some ways, a lot more serious and Thor Dark World tilted because of the content and because of where they wanted to put Thor. In the comics, Thor's a pretty serious guy. Mm-hmm. Um, the comics aren't as necessarily as comedic most of the time, uh, or weren't. And I, I just think that's what they were. They thought that they needed to do was like we have to treat this like it, it's super serious material, or the audience won't treat it seriously. But then there was no joy in it. Right. It just wasn't. It wasn't necessarily a fun movie to watch unless Cat Dennings was cracking wise on screen. And some of that didn't really land right either in the movie because it seemed out of place with the events that were happening. But they didn't give you any reason to really care. Uh, And they clearly didn't know how to handle Jane Foster in that movie. So she's not in this one Mm -hmm. at all. They've broken up at this point. Yeah, they kind of play that for laughs. Uh, But yeah, I mean, Natalie uh, Portman. Portman. uh, I almost said Merchant. Very different person. Yeah. Natalie Portman basically was like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Her contract was up, so she was gone. Um, In fact, when she shows up in Endgame, that's leftover footage from from Thor 2. Um, So I think think that, I don't know, that's my my take on what happened was they needed to retool. They didn't know what to do, and they kind of just threw it out to the wind. Because my understanding is, like, Taika Waititi showed up saying, this is what I want to do. And they were like, that's so totally different and kind of in line with what's going on with Guardians. Yeah, I feel like this movie wouldn't have happened without Guardians. Right. And they brought in Taika Waititi and also Chris Hemsworth had been around long enough that someone realized, this is a really funny guy. We should take advantage of that. Even though Thor is a serious character, Mm -hmm. maybe he's been hanging around the Avengers and Tony Stark long enough so that this side of him has been brought out. I don't know. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I think an argument can be made that, oh, it's out of character, but it's still funny as hell, so... I, don't know, I, I mean, in the first movie, he's playing a fish out of water where he's like, you know, throwing coffee cups and, and, and it, all the, that stuff works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's a different kind of comedy though. That he's I, I, here. I don't disagree at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they kind of let Hemsworth be Hemsworth more, mm-hmm. I think in this one of, well, we're going to play up, you know, the almost oh god what's the character it's jeeves and um anyway but basically an aristocrat who's out of touch okay yeah um and that's almost how you can see the thor the way thor is played in in these movies um 
So, uh, anyway, yeah, I don't know. What? Um, there's some really great new characters. Uh, like you said, Tessa Thompson is is in this as Valkyrie, um, and she is seen again in Infinity War and then End of Endgame, um, and hopefully not the last we see of her. I th- think she might be in the next Thor. I don't know. I would need to look that up. Natalie Portman? No. Oh, I'm Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Natalie Portman is in the next door yeah. also, but I, I believe... I'm I'll... sure Tessa Thompson wants a paycheck. Yeah, I think she's back. Um, Jeff Goldblum in it as Jeff Goldblum. Mm-hmm. But space, somehow space Goldblum. space Goldblum, but somehow doesn't take away from the rest of the movie. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a real tendency in the comics when they have a character like the Gamesmen or whatever, for them to be like real one note characters, right? They're like, ha ha, you will be in my games, and you know, for this moment in this panel, I I've got total power over you, and you know, they're real menacing, and usually are drawn with no nose. I don't know why, but it's always true. Aliens who are menacing have no nose. <laughs> and I don't remember how he was in the comics or if he existed in the comics, but I did read Planet Hulk, but it's been 15 years. Um, but yeah, he uh, he's Goldblum. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, he manages to be like, I could kill you at any moment. But also, I'm the most laid-back party dude that you could possibly meet, which also leads to one of the best jokes in the movie. It's the party plane that they turn on when they're trying to escape, and there's confetti and fireworks, and it's your birthday! It's my birthday! It's my birthday, because it's his plane. Right. Yeah. Mwah! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, entering in Tessa Thompson as one of the, the Valkyrie... Um, you know, these are characters out of the comics. There are, there are, there are, I, they haven't really established if she is the Brunhilde of the comics, um, and, and an invention, not of Jack Kirby, kind of shockingly. I think she was, uh, someone else. I don't remember whom, uh, but I think she showed up in like Defenders number two or something like that in the seventies, mm-hmm. uh, when Jack wasn't around. Um, but you know. As you would figure, she's a six foot blonde woman in the comics, right? Um, and of course, you know they've recast her with Tessa Thompson, who very different from the you know usual you know they she's just kind of a generic warrior woman. I hate to say that because I'm going to offend some huge Brunhilde fan, but um, in the comics, she's you know not not exactly the most three dimensional character. Sure, um, and giving her kind of the background that ties in with Hela, her backstory. Um, probably a 30 minute segment but is like one of the most touching but beautiful moments in that whole movie yeah. like it's just gorgeous um you know with all the the i guess they're valkyries mm-hmm. falling off their horses um but yeah yeah no i mean the the design on this movie is is bonkers and it, mm-hmm. it bounces all over the place and somehow still all feels cohesive which is yeah. impossible shouldn't work. real real kirby vibe from sakar mm-hmm. um which is just fantastic i hope they go there more often when they do space stuff yeah i mean you know eventually they're going to now do the fantastic four um and I'm, I'm hoping as you know they introduce galactus and annihilus and and you know all these other fun characters that they're not afraid to kind of stick with, you know, some of these original designs. And, and, you know, we've seen a little bit of it in the scrolls. They managed to basically retain the scrolls as, as were. They don't have giant heads, but, you know. Yeah. Neither do the actors, so what are you going to do? Um, but, yeah, the, the, the graphics in those scenes um, of, of Hela fighting the Valkyrie and, and kind of laying waste to that whole army is... I mean, it's it manages to be, yeah, for a bunch of characters, you don't know who they are. You know, very well done and very moving. Yeah. So. Speaking of Hela, I know you love Kate Blanchett. Mm-hmm. Um, what could have been a very one-note character, because she's just the goddess of death. Yeah. Like, that's her, you know, <laughs> she's got a very straightforward <laughs> goal. Um, 
but she's so fun to watch. Yeah. Like sometimes in these movies, when they switch over to like the villain's POV, it's like okay, bleh, you know, let's yeah, get we'll back, s- let's, let's get, get back to the hero. Yeah, we're advancing the story. I blah, got blah, it, blah, I got blah 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 blah. Yeah, but it's so fun. Yeah. Um, she still manages to be funny, but then she's also you know, killing just a whole planet almost. Um. So yeah, she's she's really good. Yeah, I mean, we need a different phrase other than camp. Um. Because I don't have a handy one. I don't feel like it is that campy, though. <laughs> she's, pretty, she's pretty campy. Um, she, uh, I mean, she's strutting around while she's, you know, kind of being very blasé while, like, murdering people. And, you know, has to put on her amazing regalia in order to, you know, perform these horrible acts. I and she's just chewing the scenery. I mean, yeah. Kate Blanchett is is maybe one of the most talented people of her generation and of our generation. It's not like she's older or younger than us, <laughs> right? Um, and she manages to, yeah. I mean, have a really good time with the role, so you're having a good time with her. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of, you know, I, I would say if you were going to find kind of a direct line, like Jack Nicholson had a good time doing the Joker back in 89, which made him fun to watch, kind of even in the scenes where he was doing, you know, horrible things. You know, whether it was, uh, yeah, I think about like, Oh, the balloons got away, and you know he had Bob with him the whole time, and he just turns around and shoots Bob for absolutely no reason other than he's frustrated. And you're like, oh, he's so evil, you know. <laughs> um, and it, it kind of reads to me a, a bit like that. And, and so it's not camp as in, you know, Julie Newmar going, oh, it's perfect, you yeah. know. Um, but it it's it's closer to that than it is to. I don't know, Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, who haven't we talked about? Oh, so Hulk is more fully realized than he's ever been because he's been Hulk for the past two years, I think, is how long he's been gone. Mm-hmm. He has not been Bruce Banner the entire time, so now he speaks in full sentences and um, be- becoming more... Professor Hulk than he had been before. He's not... He's getting there. Yeah. I mean, no, he's not smart. He's not... He's not. Professor Hulk is, like, basically the merging of both Bruce Banner and Hulk. Yeah. And it's not that, because Bruce Banner's nowhere to be seen. But it's allowing the Hulk side of him to become more of a character and a person. Right. Agreed. Yeah, um, it is. It is. I, I would agree with you. It does feel like the most realized version of Hulk, and and one that's like doable in the comics of like Hulk can have subject verb agreement. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he uh, he's not just like going roar, you mm-hmm. know, and, and and pounding on things, which is fun too. But um, yeah, he. Uh, I do think that there's a... So, if you don't know, you probably do. But if you don't know, essentially what happened was when Marvel first launched as an independent studio at the beginning of this cycle and they were releasing their movies, the the other studios were releasing them, but they were not producing them. So, that ended up with some weird thing with Hulk where Universal held on to... If you're doing just a Hulk movie we're going to do it. You're, we're going to release it. Um, and so once Disney got into the mix, they were like, uh, uh-uh, that's not what we're going to do, but it meant they couldn't do any straight Hulk movies. So you have to tell the Hulk story now tucked into everybody else's stories. Mm-hmm. So that's why he's winding up here. He's winding up, um, you know, and they're advancing him in the Avengers movies, but then you miss the, the major gulf between here and end game. Um, and even a little bit of, like, you, you have to imply that the reason he doesn't want to come out in Infinity War is because of whatever happened between Hulk and Thanos between the end of this movie and whatever happens on the ship. Right. 
and you never really see that. Mm-hmm. And it's to me that's one of the you know they had a lot of threads to pull together with all the Avengers movies, but um, yeah, after was... you've really seen him here, you really wanted to see him in Infinity War. And they didn't do that, which shocked me. Because, frankly, also, when they were faking the publicity stills... Yeah, they put him into one of he, the... He was shock, in the... Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be the the Hulk suit. Um, but it's... it's Yeah. Um, I was going to say something. What was it? I don't remember. Oh, I just talked for so long. Crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> I even lost was my it, train of thought. Is it about Hulk? Yeah, so, <laughs> um, I mean, obviously it was about Hulk. I just didn't remember what. So he shows up in Endgame, and he is now Professor Hulk. You don't see how he got there mm-hmm. at all. I feel like I heard that there were some deleted scenes, maybe, that talked more about it, but I don't know. Don't, don't hold me in my word there. Point is, wasn't in the movie. Right. I mean, they told you what you needed to know to understand what had happened. Yeah, and it, it, it turns out to be a funny scene because he's now just sitting with them as Hulk in a diner having like full-on I'm Bruce Banner type conversation, um, which is a little sh- jarring, but it's it's funny too. So yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he, he it, it it's it's fun to see him in this movie and kind of you know partnered up with. Um, with Thor and, and Loki and, and the gang and Loki's arc in this one, it really kind of comes to a conclusion, which is interesting but that they had to then leap backward to the first Avengers movie. Right. With the TV show. With the TV mm-hmm. show. So you have a completely different version. Like, who no, hasn't this is, a, this arc. is Avengers Loki that is coming into this TV show. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is the one in which like, I mean, for the first two thirds of the movie, Loki and Thor are frenemies at best. Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of for the last third, you're like, Oh, they're, they're kind of reconciled now. And and I don't know what the future. Well, they have a common enemy and they, yeah, they'd like to survive and get off of Asgard as it blows up. Yeah. And, and you know, kind of the arc that I feel like you feel is there from the first Thor movie where he, you know, he knows he's not actually his brother. He's, you know, got, you know, some jealousy issues and, and isn't quite sure where he belongs. Um, he does get a chance to, you know, feel like, okay, I actually belong. I am actually as welcome now with my brothers. I always kind of want, I mean, my parents are both gone, so my brother's kind of it and... There's no throne to be had anymore. Right. Because we got no planet at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah. So um, he's I feel just like he's been really... humbled a little bit. Yeah. Um, but they do a lot of fun stuff through the movie with Loki. Between like him showing oh, yeah. up as a hologram and Thor just like throwing things yeah. through him. And... To get help. Yeah. Get help <laughs> is really, really good. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Story about the snakes. Yeah. T- Tessa Thompson tying him up and yeah. you know, thinking he's an illusion, so they throw things at him and it bounces off his forehead. But yeah, it's it's um, you know I think I think Loki is really the best part of the second one. Yeah, I and, would I would agree. And kind with of that. stole the show, and then I think he's you know they could they really carry a lot of that into this one. I think very successfully. Yeah. Plus, I was really, I think he's got some interesting skills, and it's really fun watching him fight, and he gets to fight at the end, so I liked that too. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, we said this one wasn't going to be very long. I don't yeah. know if there's a whole bucket ton for us to say. A um, couple of more new characters that make it into in game. Um, Taika Waititi voices Korg. Right. And I cannot remember the name of his little friend. I think it's supposed to be a female character. Um, but I not, don't quote me on that. But I can't, I, I can't, I can't remember the name of that little thing. Yeah, anyway, yeah. it doesn't matter. So anyway, Korg uh, makes it off of Asgard too and is, comes back in Endgame. Right. Yeah. Um, Korg's a lot of fun. <laughs> 
kind of he's kind of the the warm up act of the gladiator stuff. Yeah, um, and he's kind of accepted his lot in life and the reason he's there. You know, he yep. tried to start a revolution and no one showed up and that went poorly for him. So mm-hmm. he ended up here in, in prison. Yeah, um, his doesn't get along with his stepdad. <laughs> I didn't even remember that part. Yeah, that part's cool. He was talking about his stepdad. I think he talks about him in both movies. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it. You know, it. it and I always like Taika Waititi showing up in things. Uh, he was in Suicide Squad, and I thought you know, very very different character, and and um, you know, but. Yeah, you know, I think here as the director, he was able to just kind of do the voice and mm-hmm. yeah, make it work. So the the reason apparently he was selected was the image of the fight that's at the when Thor has kind of you know, are you the god of you know hammers? You know that whole conversation, which <laughs> effing brilliant. <laughs> uh, like, no, you're the god of thunder. Um, Of him coming out and, you know, he's doing his, like, little laser drill or lightning drill through all the guys. But he first jumps at them all with the lightning coming down. Oh, yeah. With the... Oh, God, what song is that? The (laughs) Immigrant immigrant Song. song Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, that was what he pitched to Kevin Feige. Like, that was it. What more do you need? I think that was in the trailer. Yeah. And that was like... I was like, sold. I'm in. Yeah. Like, I hated Dark World, but I am in with with this one. Yeah, they had to give you something very different yeah. from Dark World. And and this one also kind of, you know, Guardians had really opened the gate for, like, what is our color palette for the mm-hmm. Marvel Universe? What yeah. can we actually do? And, you know, DC can go off and own everything's going to be in black and white right up to the latest release from, you know, not the latest, latest release, but the Zack Snyder cut has had its black and white release, so you know it's an art film. <laughs> um in Marvel's, like, you know, I am Iron Man when he's, like, candy-colored. Art film implies that it's good. <laughs> it is. There's there's a lot of people who think it's good. I know there are. Yep. They're wrong. Yeah. A lot of people take horse dewormer, too. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but, uh, yeah, people have opinions out there left and right. <laughs> they do. They're just wrong. Uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, I mean, they, they really expand on the color palette here. And I, I think that's part of what makes it so interesting is they kind of jump from world to world. Because um, the New York scenes feel very naturalistic at the mm-hmm. very beginning. And, you know, you get kind of a quasi-mystical thing in, in Norway. But then, um, yeah, you get to Sakaar and it's... I mean, your eyes are bleeding by the end of the <laughs> get off planet. And they managed to do a really good job of, of maintaining a consistent look and feel to Asgard when they're there. Yeah. From the prior movies. Yeah. I wish I could remember more that I had to say, like from the last podcast, but I don't. Anything I don't know. Else? No, not really. I think we should keep it short since we didn't actually watch the movie. I seem to think that yeah. seems like a mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, you know, we're we're gonna try and pick up again and actually finish. I don't honestly remember if we did a Black Widow podcast. Yeah, we did. Yeah, shit. <laughs> I know we talked about it at length. Sometimes no. there's a mic in front of us and sometimes there's not. We, we did. We, there was a mic in front of us. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Because we came back and did an extra five minutes at the end. Correct. Okay. It's all coming back to me. Yep. The past 18 months have been a blur. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we'll be back with Black Panther and then we'll get into Infinity War. Um, yeah, we're starting to get into movies we've already done. Yeah. Because that was the first one you did. You did Black Panther with Amy. You're right. That was like the fourth podcast or Uh something. Yeah. All right. (laughs) So, um, anyway, but we'll we'll keep that one short. We'll just tell you guys to just go watch Black Panther and then listen to that. And then, so do that as homework before the next podcast. (laughs) Listen to the old podcast. We will too. And we'll watch the movie. And then we'll, we'll pick up and do another short one i guess okay thanks jamie thanks ryan bye everybody bye bye
that about wraps it up for this edition of The Signal Watch, a production of the League of Melbotus. Thanks for sticking with us. If you enjoyed the podcast, we invite you to drop on by The Signal Watch blog, where you'll find write-ups of a wide variety of movies and more. We'd love to hear from you, so find us online and let us know what you think. Whether you prefer email, blog comments, or social media, we'll be happy to hear from you. We'll be back soon with more exceedingly high-quality content. So, until next time. God damn it, babies. You've got to be kind.